All right, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna. I got a video that this is gonna go in front of. Made the video 18th of December, something like that. Uh, and I didn't put it up because I was in a real bad spot when I made the video. Real bad mood. Uh, things were looking. Things were looking pretty rough. I have my baler that I bought behind me. That's what this video is about. I just pulled it out. I'm going to wash it off. Air my tire up. Uh, and I, I found the video today. I watched it. I, I just wanted to see. I didn't know if I was yelling at people in it or not. Um, and it's, it's, not a, it's not a fun video. It's a very it's a depressing video is what it is. Uh, but I think, you know, it's, it shows, it shows the, the negative side of doing custom farming or just farming as a young, young person in, as an individual. Uh, and let's get one thing very straight. I can't afford new equipment. There's, I can't afford those payments. I, I got a new round baler uh, and it's one of the best things I've done. Uh, I can't afford a new square baler. Uh, usually, when I make my equipment purchase decisions, it's I have an opportunity to pay for the equipment, expand my business, and it's a very short time frame. So when I do make decisions, usually, you know, if I'm calling somebody on a on a Monday, I want that thing ready to go Thursday. Friday at the latest, you know, I'm, for the most part, some things I'm not that way on, like this baler, I was that way on, uh, to give you a rundown, the job, uh, due to, when you get into custom hay, you will find that there are some people, it does not matter what you do, uh, they're going to change their mind every five seconds, you cannot please those people, you can stand on your head if they say stand on your head, and then they're going to be like, "Why aren't you know you're not doing it right?" So uh, this turned into be one of those decisions. I this baler was baling in the field when I bought it. They were baling grass with it. I saw the bales. Uh, they dropped the new baler off. They unhooked this baler from the tractor, so it was baling in the field. Um, it was rough, and it came to me. There is a lot of stuff this baler needed. There's a lot of stuff it still needs, but this baler was in my price range, and the deal I made, it's got to be baling. But it was baling in the field, so it should have been good to go. I went into the worst crop condition possible. Uh, this stuff, absolutely horrible. Uh, we were hanging bill hooks nonstop, you know, in the conditions it was bailing in, the baler was probably running okay. The conditions I put it in, you found all the issues. Um, so let me make this perfectly clear. I get a lot of comments that say, you need to be yelling at your dealers. I wouldn't put up with that. That's, that's ridiculous. If you, uh, you know, if you're one of those people who all you ever do is yell at your dealers, you will find that when that person walks into the store, it's extremely hard for people working in that business to even choke a smile down at you. And I'm not going to be one of those people. If I have an issue, I bring it up. And I brought up the issue I had with this machine. Uh, Livingston's did everything they could. They broke their backs to get this thing going. And at the end of the day, I took my round baler, I finished the job, you know. Heston round baler is damn hard to beat, and I, that's one reason I have one. Livingston's, I work with the Mule Shoe Store and the Dow Hart Store, and they are the reason I have Heston equipment. Those are fantastic guys to deal with. My salesman is in the Mule Shoe Store, you know, that's almost four hours from me. I have bought numerous equipment from him. I've bought three swathers from him. Uh, two balers. You know, I something like that. And fantastic guy. Uh, 
he's currently in a in a bad bad situation right now. He he got hurt, um, and I I wish him the best recovery possible because I truly do like the guy. Um, Scott dealt with me when nobody else would even give me the time of day. Uh, as a young guy, I was broke. The cattle market was horrible. I mean, that, when I mean broke, I was broke. And Scott worked with me. He made things right. He got me an equipment that I needed to. Scott has pretty much helped me build the hay business I have today. And if I need something, I go, I go to Scott. Um, I get all my work done and parts through Dalhart. They would love for me to buy stuff at Dalhart. I would like to buy stuff at that store, but it's really hard to break that relationship that I have with Scott. I'm sure I will buy equipment through Dalhart, but I'm going to keep keep throwing business at Mule Shoe because, I mean, the, the guy, I had people who wouldn't return my phone calls. I had people who would look at me and then just turn around and walk off. Why, why are we going to deal with this young kid? It's like that hay slicer I bought this summer. I walked into an ag, in a, a dealer in Oregon. I said, I'm, I want to buy this hay slicer. And the manager of that store wouldn't give me the time of day. I had to work through the secretary. I mean, it was, it was a joke. I, honestly, if I didn't really want the machine, and I did want the machine, it really was a joke. Uh, and I run into that a lot. You know, living sins aren't that way. They, they will do what they can do to get you going. Uh, that's why I have a massive Ferguson wind rower. And honestly, I, if they were a John Deere dealer, I would probably buy John Deere equipment through them. But, you know, I, I still think Heston has a leg up on them in every department. Uh, Ron Baylor is a very close. I don't know which one's better. But definitely in square balers and swathers, they're by far leaps and bounds ahead of that. And I don't care who you tell. Uh, but I'm not going to yell at them. Uh, I absolutely really like everyone in the Dalhart store. The mechanics are awesome. They, they bust their ass to get me going. Because I am feeding cattle most of all the time, or checking cattle. And my custom hay business is a secondary business. It's primary in the amount of money it takes, but it's a secondary business. It just, the time for it, I don't have the time that I need to have for it. And they work overtime to get, keep me going. And I'm just, when I see a comment on one of these videos, or the fact that somebody's sending my videos to living since whether to help me or cause trouble for me, I don't really know what. You know, it's hard to believe people. It just pisses me off, really, because they, those guys, they work extra, extra hard to get me going. Uh, but really, what this, what this video that you're going to see is, if you're in a situation like I am, and you take... You take a risk, you take a leap onto that, to step up to something, things can go sideways, and they can go sideways really quick, and it can put you in a very bad spot, and I, I walked out of there with a, the job turned out okay, and in this video, it's going to be horrible, but it did turn out okay, I took my round baler, I finished the job. But I got into, the customers weren't easy to deal with. This machine was not working the way I thought it was going to. Um, I think this is going to be a fantastic investment when it comes to wheat and anything but Milo. Uh, and it's at the right price point where it will give me the options I need to have. But by far, when you, uh, if I have a problem with Livingston's, I'm going to say I have a problem with them, and I'm going to call them and let them know I have a problem with them. I don't have a problem with them 
They, are, they have been a fantastic company, and that's why when I get messages through our Facebook or on here, people asking me about testing equipment, you know, they're thinking about buying it through the Chickasha store or wherever. Hands down, I just go for it. I think most guys, you know, if you can make it work, they're a great company to work with. So, this thing, 65,000 bales on it. I still don't know what the repair bill is going to be coming through the shop. Probably won't know that for a while. Hopefully, well, I hope I do know pretty quick because that means, that means my salesman got back and, and is okay. But uh, so right now, uh, I know everyone's always saying prayers, but uh, definitely if you know if you know this man, he's just been such a good, good guy to me to help me do my business. Uh, I definitely am worried about him. I, I hope for a, any kind of recovery, a good recovery at all, because I just, I hate to see people just get hurt like that. So uh, I'll uh, end this, get this thing washed up, and we'll go from there. So this is going to be a really long video. Sorry. Like I said, you know, Livingston's have been amazing to work with. There was one dealer. There was one guy. And that's how I started talking to Scott. There was a guy that when I bought my first swather, a guy would never even call me back. Did, didn't want to deal with me. He worked for Livingston's, but I, hopefully he's not there anymore. And I called Scott and I was like, hey, there's this swather down here at this other store. I want it. And he got it for me, you know? He made it happen, so. Let me get this done and get you guys on to the next video.